Elizabeth and thanks so much for coming in. It's a pleasure. Um, so before we get started on your latest book, Close Your Eyes, congratulations on the enormous success of your last book, Life or Death. Thank you very much. It was sort of it was great to do something really different, to to write a standalone and to have readers embrace it, you know, all around the world. It sort of uh, it helped prove to me and I hope my publishers that um, that if I write it, they will follow me. <laughs> was it difficult to come back to Joe Lachlan after being away, or was it like returning to an old friend? It was. It was like returning to an old friend, but it was also quite difficult because I had so much fun writing Life or Death, doing, you know, it's a book that I love enormously. And, uh, and so I think I struggled initially to, to come back to Joe and because I've, I have this sort of thing I've always tried to do is never to write the same book twice and, and to make each book incredibly different and to, so they can be read as standalones. And, and I guess, you know, and that's sometimes I do that by changing the point of view. You know, sometimes I do it by having Joe as a minor character rather than a major character. And I guess when I started writing Close Your Eyes, I was wary of the fact that I, I didn't want to go over all ground. Um, and so it took me a long while to think of a sort of dynamic, particularly with his family and what might be happening in his life that would make this book very different, but also one that I was very proud to put my name on. Well, it's been about a week since I finished reading it, and I think I'm still recovering from the <laughs> intense emotions. Um, was it, without giving away spoilers, um, was it a very difficult book for you to write in terms of the emotional content? And yeah, it's funny. I, I think I'm a reluctant crime writer. <laughs> um, and if, if people were to ask me which bits of the book, of books I like writing most, it's not the plot. It's not the intricacies of, of, you know, creating twists and turns and red herrings. And um, I love writing about people and relationships and, uh, and conversations between people. And so, and I felt with, you know, the very early, the very first Joe Lachlan book, you know, which was The Suspect, which was sort of 11 years ago now, it was very much based around Joe's family, you know, his wife and children and... and this threat that was, um, that was made to this perfect life that he'd built for himself. And I guess over the course of you know, the Joe O'Loughlin books, um, the family have drifted in and out. But I guess I want to, to write, in Close Your Eyes, I wanted to, book, to write a book that was very much, again, about Joe's family and, uh, and where he was. And so I loved writing those scenes, um, but they were very powerful um, scenes. It's very emotional and, uh, and you know, um, I'm sure there will be people that will be, you know, left in tears over certain events in the book. <laughs> those last three words in the book, that's, that's what did. I was holding it together until then, but those last three words really pushed me over the edge um, into... It's what I, look, I, tell you, I, I it's funny, I cried at the end of um, Life or Death. I cried at the end of this book, and I'd cry every time I rewrote the ending. You know, I'd find myself getting all emotional, and it, um, I, I figure sort of, you know, I'm a complete... You know, I'm a complete sook. I cry. I, I, I cried at Finding Nemo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't cry at Finding Nemo. And, and it's, uh, you have no soul. You know, my, my, my daughters, they just completely think I'm such a wuss. And they sort of think every time they go and see a film, I sort of sit there and they sort of lean forward in their chairs and look at me because they know I'm going to have tears <laughs> streaming down my cheeks. I just can't help myself. How much of um, mentioning your daughters, how much of that... Um, experience of fatherhood that you've had went into this book because I noticed a lot of fatherhood themes and motherhood themes and yeah no it's interesting I think um, several of the Joe Lachlan books have been fatherhood has been a big issue that's come out in it because you know Joe Lachlan has two daughters um, Charlie who is now 18 she was eight in the very first book she's now 18 in Close Your Eyes and Emma is now 10 or 11 so she's got two girls I've got three daughters and there is no doubt that through the course of my writing that um, they have informed me. There are, there are scenes in the book, there are stri- stretches of dialogue in the book that have, lifted, have been lifted dir- directly from real life, you know, conversations that I've had with my daughters. Um, and uh, no, it's, it definitely informs me. And this idea of, I think, fatherhood, I think every man will wonder at some point whether they're a good father or not. You know, you try to do your best. You can obviously any. All you really have to go on is you look at your own father and and realise that your own father made mistakes and what was good or bad about the way he raised you. 
Um, but even then, you look at your own performance and wonder, how am I doing here? You know, <laughs> and uh, and it's always going to be a question mark. And I think, and Joe is like everyone else, even though he's a psychologist and has such an astonishing understanding of human behaviour. I mean, he has two blind spots when it comes to understanding human behaviour. One is the woman he loves, you know, his estranged wife, Julianne. He's never been able to read her. And the other one is himself, you know, and traditionally psychologists are absolutely terrible at self-analysis. And so Joe at times has real doubts about whether he's a good father or not. And um, playing on his doubts, Throughout the course of this book, a character popped up, Milo Coleman, who I found fascinating in that sort of way, the way you love to hate them. Um, Was that, what gave you the idea to bring up a character like that, someone from Joe's past? I guess it was interesting. I I, I thought Joe, being a psychologist, it sort of occurred to me, and I think it's because, you know, in my my past as a journalist, um, I work with forensic psychologists uh, who had worked on major crimes in the UK and uh, and one of the things that struck me was that there was a rivalry between them and at times you know they knew when other psychologists had made mistakes in investigations when they had led police um, in the wrong direction and um, and I guess even though these people they're not being paid for what they do they volunteer their services most times um, there is this sense of rivalry between them and uh, so in the case of Close Your Eyes you know Joe O'Loughlin has always been a reluctant investigator he hates working with the police the way they drag him back in to investigate the murder of a, a mother and daughter in a remote farmhouse is because one of his former students Milo Coleman has set himself up as a criminal profiler called the Mind Hunter, and has instead of assisting the investigation has jeopardised it and Joe feels as, though, feels as though this man has traded on his name, has jeopardised the investigation. He has no choice but to step in and try to repair the damage. He was, he was a very interesting foil, I thought, for Joe, um, just to compare um, how he's always the reluctant one and he's always feels things so keenly and doesn't want fame, but Milo is all in it for fame. That's true. It's interesting. This is one of those issues that um, I remember, you know, I was very fortunate to work with a man called Paul Britton in the UK, who was the pioneer of offender profiling. And uh, and one of the things Paul Britton once said to me is, he, is that I, he could not understand those people that seemed to gain pleasure or get excitement out of what they were doing when it came to investigating a crime. He said, this is a terrible event. Someone has died. How can you be excited by that prospect? You should be horrified by it. And, um, and again, he, 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 was, he was always opposed to those people that got involved that seemed to, to use the investigation to further their own interests, to make a name for themselves. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I guess that's what... Uh, I'll put a similar sort of um, sensibility, uh, and I've given it to Joe O'Loughlin. He... He's reluctant about investigating. He hates investigating crimes. Um, and he is completely opposed to people that seem to gain pleasure from it. And Joe is a character as well, um, because of his physical frailties, um, as opposed to how strong his mind is. Um, is that something you set out to do, or did it just kind of develop that way? Like, how much planning goes into... Um, well, there was absolutely no planning into into what would happen to Joe because I, I never intended to write him more than once. He was, I didn't want to write a series when I um, when I created Joe O'Loughlin in The Suspect. I thought it was going to be a one-off book. You know, I would write standalones. Um, I gave him early onset Parkinson's because I think there was this tragic irony about someone having a brilliant mind but a crumbling body, um, and in a sense, you know. You know, he, he didn't appear, or he was a very minor character in the following books, and he, he reappeared in a book called Shatter as a major character. And he's obviously loved by readers. I mean, they, I get a lot of people that want me to, to, to go back to Joe and to sort out his private life and to, you know, um, women that... Like, he gets marriage proposals and emails, <laughs> and people imagine that we live next door to each other and that I have a beer with him every Friday. Um, but... Um, uh, I guess, in a sense, I created the use by date in Joe by giving him Parkinson's, you know, and that was now 11 years ago. Um, you know, and he has aged in real time. 
um, and his disease has got progressively worse, um, that, you know, there is a use by doubt. I don't know how many more books there will be for Joe, you know. Um, there'll certainly be, you know, at least one more after Close Your Eyes, but it's a book-by-book book prospect, really, mm-hmm. um, as, to, as to how much longer um, he can continue doing what he does. And um, in the book-by-book book process, to what level do you plan things out? Do you always know who your killer is going to be, or do they sometimes... I never know. I have never know. <laughs> no idea. No idea. I think it's um, actually to the to the degree where I think with uh, a few books ago I wrote "Say You're Sorry" and I got to the penultimate chapter and the killer could have been any one of about six different people, and I didn't know which one it was going to be. Now, I had a favourite, um, but other than that, it could have been anyone. Um, so I never really plan. Uh, I never really plan a book. I never know how a book's going to end, um, and. Uh, I set it up where I always give myself. I, uh, what scares me most in the writing prospect, in the writing, sorry, in the whole sort of writing um, process, is if I realise there's only one way for the story to go, and that terrifies me because what if that is straight off a cliff, and there's no, you know, I write myself into a dead end. I always write where I can see several different avenues and directions I can go. I feel safe then because. I, you know, if something goes wrong, I can just take the story a different direction. Um, um, but it's it's wonderfully organic. It's very exciting to write that way, not knowing what's going to happen next. When I come in from my cabana of cruelty, where I write, uh, and I say to my wife, you would not believe what happened today, um, I'm genuinely excited because I've just suddenly thought of a wonderful new twist to the story. Um, Hopefully the reader won't see it coming if I don't see it coming. I certainly didn't see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, Michael, thank you so much for coming in to speak to us today. Thank you, Sarah. It's a pleasure. And um, Close Your Eyes is available from Booktopia now at www.booktopia.com.